everyone, Gabriella here from The Sewing Studio to show you how to make this quilt top in only five steps using your serger. I had so much fun making this quilt and it was super easy to do. So if you are a confident beginner, this would be a great quilt for you. All you need is one jelly roll. I used the one from the new K-Facet fabric line, your basic quilting supplies, a square ruler with a 45 degree line in the middle, and a serger. Let's get started. Step one, serge your jelly roll strips together in sets of three. The first thing I did was open my jelly roll and lay my strips out so I could see what I was working with. I grouped my strips together in sets of three, putting the ones I liked next to each other and set those groups aside to serge together. Don't overthink your strip combinations, just group three together at a time and set it aside. You also do not need a jelly roll to make this quilt. If there is a fabric collection you've been wanting to create with that doesn't have jelly rolls available for purchase, all you need to do is cut your own two and a half inch strips. You could even use the stripology ruler to make this easier. Once you have all of your groups of three set aside, get your serger and set it to a normal four thread overlock stitch. This stitch will give you about a quarter inch seam allowance, which is perfect for quilting. Serge your strips together and be sure not to cut too much fabric off with your blade as you don't want to make your strips any smaller. You're just stitching them together. Step two, press and sew your sets of three strips together on both sides to make a tube. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it's going to work out. Here you have the option to spray a little starch on your strips before you press them to somewhat stabilize your fabric. When you go to cut your squares out of the strips, the sides of the squares will be on the bias, which means the fabric will have a little give or stretch to it. And that is something that doesn't always go hand in hand with quilting. So by starching your strips now, you might have an easier time piecing your squares later on. I didn't starch mine, so you don't have to do this. It just might be helpful to you. After you're done pressing your strips, group two that look nice together at a time until all of your strips of three are grouped in sets of two. Serge those strips right sides together on both sides to make a tube. Step three, get a square ruler that has a line in the middle that measures 45 degrees and make sure that this ruler is larger than the tube that you just serged together. It's time to cut some squares, so let me show you how. Now you just lay your tubes flat on your cutting mat and get your square ruler. Your ruler needs to be larger than your tube, so I used a 12 and a half inch square ruler, but you could use a smaller one if that's what you have, as long as it has a 45 degree line in the middle of it and it's larger than your tube. Now line the 45 degree line on your ruler up with the stitch line on your tube. It's important that you line it up with your stitch line and not the edge of your tube. Once you line it up like you see here, slice down the side of your ruler. Now you have to line the point of your square ruler up right at the point of your first cut while also lining up the 45 degree line on the ruler with your stitch line on the bottom and slice again. And just like that, magic, that's how you get your squares. Step 
Now line your ruler up on the top and then on the bottom again the same way, switching off until all of your squares are cut out. This may take some getting used to, so do it slowly at first and make sure you have your lines and points lined up correctly till you get the hang of it. With some TV magic, I was able to speed up my process here, but it truly did not take long to accomplish once I got the hang of it. Also, the cool thing about using a jelly roll or a full collection, if that's what you're doing, is all of the fabrics will always go really well together. Step number four, press and lay your squares out in the way you want them stitched together. Okay, so here I highly recommend you press as opposed to sliding your iron around when you iron. I made the mistake of sliding my iron around out of habit and my squares did warp a little but it wasn't enough to really matter too much, so don't let this part scare you. This is also where the spray starch I had mentioned earlier would come in handy to stabilize your fabric. Ultimately, the most important thing to remember at this step is to handle your squares as little as possible and press, press, press. No sliding of the iron. And now comes the fun part. You get to arrange your squares in the way you want them stitched out. I used a design wall, aka a large piece of felt, to do this. Using a piece of felt on the wall makes it easier for me, personally, to walk back and visualize how the finished quilt will look. But you have a few options like laying your pieces out on your floor or on your bed. It's totally up to you, but I do recommend you lay your pieces out to make some kind of a plan. Plus, like I said before, this is the fun part, or at least I think so, so just enjoy it! Step 5. Pin and serge your squares together. Start by serging your squares together to make rows and then pin and serge the rows together. When you are pinning your squares together, be sure to match up your seams and pin where your seams meet to hold your pieces in place. You also want to put your pins in your squares parallel to the edge of the fabric. This will make it easier to pull the pins out when you are serging your squares together and also will avoid the possibility of accidentally chopping your pin in half and ruining your blade. I pinned all of my squares together in the order that I chose in my design, matching all of the seams first, and serge them all in one sitting. The serger seams are a little thicker to sew over than a regular quilt seam, so sometimes it helps to lift the front part of your foot before you go over a bump of a seam. Also, keep in mind that the fabric will stretch if you pull, so avoid pulling your pieces too much. I also wanted to say that not all of my seams matched up totally perfectly in this quilt top, but it's okay because the busy fabric camouflaged that really well and most of my seams ended up pretty close to perfect so I was happy with it. Now we give those rows a good press. Now, you pin your rows together, matching all of the seams again like you did previously, and also following your design, and serge all of those rows together. Now, 
This pinning part is the most tedious part, but also one of the most important steps, so don't skip it. You really just want to make sure that all of your seams are being held before you stitch them together. After you're done serging all of your rows together, give your quilt top another good press. Wow, I can't believe this quilt top only took a day to make and all I needed was one jelly roll and my baby lock serger. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well for more videos like this. If you're interested in learning more about a baby lock serger, please give us a call or come and see us in store. Thanks for watching and happy serging!